everyone, it's Carmen. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm here with a video about Instagram and specifically why you should break up with Instagram. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very, very much. So if you're on Instagram, and let's be honest, who isn't, and especially if you're running a business, I'm sure you've been wondering the same thing. What on earth do I do with Instagram? How will I cope with the ever-changing algorithm that never seems to be in my favor? How do I make sure that my posts are visible to my audience? Do I always have to wade through adverts to see photos of my friends? And the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, why are you using the app? Is it for personal use or is it for business use? And if it's for personal use, then it's probably the best idea to just move to a different app because Instagram is making it more and more difficult to see actual photos of our friends. Uh, one app that I'm really liking at the moment is Be Real, which I can assure you has nothing to do with Instagram Reels. It's an app where you can share photos with your closest friends. It prompts you at a random time every day to take a picture. And once you open that notification, you only have two minutes to take a picture. So it urges you to be real. And it's, it's just really, really fun. So give it a try. I expect though that most of you are, like me, using Instagram for growing your business and promoting your products. And if you joined Instagram uh, way back in the golden days where you could gain hundreds of followers each day, I'm sure you're feeling very disappointed. Exposure for photo posts seems to be at an all-time low. Instagram seems to be pushing reels with dancing, people pointing at text, reels showing progress of art or, you know, hair coloring, and then just show one split second of the result. So you have to watch it over and over again to pause it at the right time so you can see the result. Okay, calm down. <laughs> we see outfit reels of what I would wear as XYZ character promoting mainly teens to purchase loads of cheap clothes for 15 minutes of fame. There are lots of reels with shocking content such as trauma sharing but and on the other hand also content that makes you think like why is this even on here like people showing their faces with or without a filter you know it makes me wonder where are the photos with beautiful compositions where is the beautiful art where's the genuine connection that we all joined instagram for but let's take a step back because i think most of us long-term instagram users have formed an emotional connection with the app we remember how it used to be, we found so many like-minded people on the app, and some even became our friends. We remember when our Instagram posts could get so much exposure so quickly that our businesses flourished and we just want that back. So what we need to do is take an objective look at Instagram and see what it has actually done for us. So at the beginning, Instagram might have been an original app. But soon, uh, Instagram started adopting features from other apps. We only got video posts in 2013 when Instagram started feeling threatened by Vine. Rest in peace, Vine. Then in 2016, Snapchat was a new popular thing, which resulted in Instagram stories, the discovery page, and sending disappearing photos in your DMs. In 2016, Instagram tried to be more like YouTube and introduced IGTV, something that they've abandoned in the last year. And of course, in 2020, Instagram introduced Reels to basically become a copy of TikTok. Most recently, and unsurprisingly, uh, <laughs> Instagram has introduced a dual photo feature that's basically like Be Real. So, there we go. <laughs> One key point to establish here is that Instagram is not original. Their key business strategy seems to be copying features from other apps. Does that seem like a business strategy that you want to rely on for traffic? I mean, sure, it can be a very clever business tactic, but does Instagram really know what they're doing. Um, just earlier this year, they rolled back some app changes after changing to a full full feed post you know you could scroll and you would see the next <laughs> i can't even explain it but they got some very negative responses to it so they rolled it back the question is do instagram even have a business strategy if it's not being shown to them by other apps 
And then, of course, the frequent algorithm changes and Instagram users hustling to catch up. Remember all of the blog posts and the videos we used to watch on recommended hashtag amount and Instagram pods and, uh, oh, you shouldn't edit your caption within 24 hours of posting because then no one will see it. There were so many people trying to make the algorithm work for them and completely changing their marketing tactic because of that. And it just it became so exhausting to keep up with Instagram. Even accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers are reporting extreme low exposure for posts. Talking about the algorithm, let me share a story of the moment when I realized Instagram was broken. And this was uh, last year when I shared my grandpa's passing. And let me, let me preface this by saying that um, when a post performs well, so lots of comments, lots of likes, or whatever, uh, Instagram tends to boost your next post coming up. And this post about my grandpa, um, in Instagram's eyes, performed well because I got so many comments on it. And my next post, which was about something completely random, suddenly got uh, boosted very heavily, and by that I mean that it got a lot of reach and I started to uh, wonder why because I was used to this kind of random post not getting many views at all and then it clicked and that's why so many accounts thrive off of trauma, um, fake stories, clickbait. If you can get a response out of your uh, viewers, whether it's heartfelt condolences or, oh, that's not true because XYZ, you know, on clickbait. Um, the Instagram thinks, oh, this post is, is doing very well and we need to boost it. Many people have reported that on TikTok they're seeing progressively more shocking posts as well because TikTok is tracking how long you look at a video. And if something shocks you, whether that's Dr. Pimple Popper or something completely different. If something shocks you, you're uh, more likely to linger on on that video. And, and bam, next time you open TikTok, you'll see an even more shocking video because uh, TikTok knows that it can keep you on the app for longer. And this is not exclusively Instagram or TikTok. I'm seeing this on especially Facebook a lot too, where the tactic is to elicit a response from people. Uh, so they'll say completely bogus stuff like red is the only color with an E in it. Prove me wrong. And of course, you know, some people are going to think that it's genuine and uh, they're going to come and no, uh, think about blue or purple or green. And we see this all the time where um, posts like, oh, I, I bet you can't solve this puzzle or only XYZ people will understand this. It's only to get a response from you so that the app will promote their posts more. With those kinds of stories being shared, getting lots of views, being very profitable, it's just very unlikely that Instagram will ever go back to the way it was. It's just making too much money for them to divert from that tactic. Another thing that was hyped up for a long time was the 10k swipe up on Instagram. Um, it was seen as the holy grail of marketing. So basically the 10k swipe up is if your account has 10,000 followers, you can add a website link in your Instagram stories. Of course, I thought it would solve all my business problems. I would sell my products so fast and I was so happy when I finally got that 10k swipe up. But really, you know, unsurprisingly, it was not all that it was hyped up to be. For the Instagram stories that I would put a swipe up link in, I would perhaps have five to ten people click on the link, um, which is <laughs> very, very low considering my account has 16,000 followers. So, um, yeah, it's not even one percent. Um, yeah. But why is the swipe up rate so low? Well, Instagram is built to keep you on the app. 
They have researched ways to be as addicting as possible because eyes on the screen is currency. Sure, you can have a swipe up link, but the entire app is designed to make you not want to leave. Ex-employees have actually revealed that Instagram, as well as Facebook, is designed to be highly addictive, uh, and they're even calling it a painkiller app, and I will link the article uh, which mentions this down below. Now, if you want to see just how addicting it is, just for fun, uh, move the Instagram icon to a different page on your phone. Um, so if it's on your home screen now, move it to a different page and just see how many times you go to swipe to the old spot and to click it. And if you want to go in even deeper, notice when or why you are going to open the app. Is it because you're bored? Are you hiding from a certain task? Are you seeking the validation and dopamine that likes and comments give you? Just a little food for thought. So looking at Instagram objectively, what do we find? They have an unreliable business strategy, algorithms that make it increasingly more difficult to reach people in a genuine way, and they have been proven to design the app so that it's addictive. Just imagine building your business for 10 years on this app, uh, gaining hundreds of thousands of followers, and then one day no longer being able to reach that audience. We have got to stop spending so much time and energy on an app that does not return the value. The best thing that you can do as a business owner is take control of how you are reaching your audience. Sure, social media might work for you, but Instagram has shown us how quickly that can change. Ask yourself, what's a communication method that I have control over? Perhaps it's your blog or your website. Uh, perhaps it's your newsletter. Usually a newsletter is your best bet for reaching your audience. If you don't have a newsletter yet, please think about starting one and link to mine is in the description box below. And just give it a try. See how much time you were spending on Instagram before and try spending that amount of time or, or less on your blog or your website or your newsletter and track if it um, produces any positive results for you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, then you can perhaps try a different platform and see if that works any better. Now, does that mean that I will delete my Instagram account? No, definitely not. Um, even though the algorithm is not showing my posts to people, the search option is still highly effective uh, for people that actively want to find me. And I've heard people say Instagram is the new website. So try and think of your Instagram account as a kind of portfolio to showcase you know, what your brand is about or what you are about. Try to make it as easy as possible for people to see at one glance what you're about. So you might have to adjust your highlights to showcase what's most important for you, whether that those are your brand values, ways to contact you, or your best-selling products. You can have your feed uh, also showcasing products or sharing quotes that you resonate with. Just make it a kind of portfolio so that people can see, ah, oh, Okay, so this is what New Leaf Designs is about. And make it easier for people to find you elsewhere too. So consider moving away from Linktree and instead creating a landing page in your own website and posting that link in your Instagram bio. It's all about having this kind of control in your own hands when it comes to building a sustainable business. And now I'd like to hear your thoughts on Instagram. Have you experienced the same as I have? Have you considered moving away from Instagram? And if so, uh, are you considering moving to another app or moving to something that is within your own control? Do let me know in the comments below and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!